Nueva Ecija, Filipino, Liliwigan ng Nueva Ecija, Ilocano, Provincia T Nueva Ecija, Kapampangan, Liliwigan ng Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, Luyag na Nueva Ecija, Tagalog pronunciation, New Weebi C Ha, Listen, PSGC, 03490000, ISO, PH New, is a landlocked province in the Philippines located in the central Luzon region. Its capital is the city of Palayan. Nueva Ecija borders, from the south clockwise, Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac, Pangasinan, Nueva Vizcaya and Aurora. The province is nationally known as the rice granary of the Philippines, producing the largest rice yield in the country. Etymology Nueva Ecija was named by the Spanish colonizers after the city of Ecija, Spain. Its indigenous names, such as Panagpanan, meaning the place where the arrow hit, defining the pre-colonial artistry and archery in the area, were abolished and changed by the government during the post-colonial period after World War II, sparking outrage from scholars and indigenous communities. Nevertheless, the name change of some municipalities into colonial names during the post-colonial period was continued by the national government. History the sprawling and varied geological features of the land now known as Nueva Ecija, includes plains, mountains and rivers, all the requisites for the birth and sustenance of life itself. The land's very first settlers came upon three mountain ranges to the east, north and west and vast southern plains. All these were sustained by a great flowing river, one whose earliest name was spoken in a now lost tongue, and which was called the Rio Grande de Pampanga by the Spanish people later on. The great Pampanga River nourished wild, fruit-bearing trees, served as home to an abundance of fish and made possible lush, teeming woodlands that sheltered animals. All these combined must have been paradise in whatever language for the land earliest settlers, who were able to not only survive but thrive in the surrounding abundance, all within easy reach. Pre-colonial era These first settlers included tribes of Alongats Igungo, or Italans, Abaca and Bequids. Settlements were built along the banks following the river. S. Undulations. The Alongats, meaning people of the forest, were the fierce headhunters and animist tribes who occupied Caringlan and the mountainous terrain of Sierra Madre and Caraballo. The head hunting communities were nestled along the riverbanks of Rio Grande's tributaries in the north. Abaca and Italan were subgroups of Alongats, meaning river settlers. Alongats survived mainly by fishing and hunting. Food production was a secondary occupation. The agriculture-based community of Caraclans and Bequids were settled in Bongabon and Pantabangan along the riverbanks of Rio Grande's tributaries in the northeast. When the waves of Malay migrations took place between 300 to 200 BC, intrepid travelers and traders set up settlements along Luzon's western coast. These early settlements formed the nucleus of the Pampango Empire that was consolidated by Balagtas. The flatlands of the southern portion of Upper Pampanga was a hospitable place for these new Malay settlers. The indigenous tribes were forced to take to the hills in the face of the Malay's superior technology. Barter trade flourished among communities that settled along the Great River. The constant riverside trading resulted in both a commercial and cultural exchange between the settlements in vast plains upstream of the Rio Grande de Pampanga. Settlements in Caringlan, Pantabangan, Bongabon and Punkan prospered and grew into more stable communities. The Kingdom of Tondo, headed from what is now central Manila, invaded the area and took hold of the southern portions of Nueva Ecija. Eventually, more areas in northern Nueva Ecija were absorbed by the Kingdom of Tondo, to a point where even present-day Nueva Vizcaya was conquered by Tondo. Even the northwest areas of Nueva Ecija, which was ruled by the Cabolón of Pangasinan, was captured by Tondo. Spanish attacks When the Spanish arrived in Manila and destroyed the territorial powers of the Tondo monarchy, much of Nueva Ecija became a de facto free land. At the time, the Pampango crown has waned and had little resistance from Spanish invasion. When the Pampango Empire fell into the hands of Spanish forces under the command of Martin de Goiti in 1572, the conquistadores began their long upward trek towards Cagayan Valley and Mountain Province. 
Their forces passed through the settlement areas of the upper Pampanga River. They also attacked the Cabolon of Pangasinan, effectively capturing more territories from local kingdoms. Because of growing territorial domain and evangelical missions, a command outpost or commandancia in the upper Pampanga River area was established. Then Governor General Fausto Cruz at Y. Gongora, July 25, 1690 to December 8, 1701, had most likely spent much of his time in the northern outpost in Caringlan and Pantabangan and, baking in the fiercely hot climate, probably waxed nostalgic about his hometown in Ecija, Andalusia in Spain. Ecija, Andalusia was also known as La Sardin or the Frying Pan because of its intensely hot summers. Thus the Governor General hit upon the notion to name the outpost Nueva Ecija. Both the new and old Ecija were washed by navigable rivers the former, by Rio Grande de Pampanga and the latter, by the River Genil. Conversion to Christianity Consistent with the history of Hispanization in the rest of Philippine archipelago, Nueva Ecija was established by Augustinian missionaries. The first mission was established in Gapan in 1595. The Augustinians abandoned their missionary work in 1636, maintaining only the mission in Bongabon. At the turn of the 18th century, the missionaries resumed their evangelical work and redirected their efforts to the northeast, towards rough mountainous terrain inhabited by Alongats. On September 1, 1759, King Carlos III of Spain issued a royal decree that ended the founding missions of Augustinians and transferred all Augustinian responsibilities in the settlements of Nueva Ecija to Franciscan friars. Through tribute collections and polo y servicio or rendering of forced labor, the Franciscans constructed churches, convents, parochial schools and tribunals. They also constructed roads and bridges to connect other settlements. In 1781, a simple irrigation system was constructed in Pantabangan. This new farming technology contributed to the promotion of agriculture in the province. New province To make possible the establishments of settlements, military force became necessary to protect the friars and whatever basic settlement structures were beginning to emerge. Thus military outposts were of utmost importance, especially with the friars trying to convert fierce head-hunting tribes with spears and bladed weapons. It was around this time, during the term of Governor-General Fausto Cruz at Y. Gongora, July 25, 1690 to December 8, 1702, that he established the military outpost he named Nueva Ecija. At this time, however, Nueva Ecija was still part of Upper Pampanga. In 2016, researchers of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines NHCP, and the provincial government found documents showing that in 1799, Carlos IV ordered the separation of towns and parishes of Upper Pampanga, near the Sierra Madre Range, as well as coastal towns of Tayabas, along the Pacific Ocean and their organization into a corregimiento political military administrative unit. Royal directives were implemented on April 25, 1801, and the Corregimiento was named Nueva Ecija after the Spanish hometown of that period's Governor General Rafael Maria de Aguilar, with Baylor as its capital. Since then, the province had undergone numerous changes in territorial composition. The progressive towns of Gapan, San Isidro, Cabiao, and Aliaga were all annexed to Nueva Ecija, resulting in an economic as well as population boom for inhabitants. While Nueva Ecija only had a population of 9,165 in 1845, the annexation of new territories three years later pegged the population at 69,135. Other changes occurred in the following years until, in 1901, Nueva Ecija. S. Northern municipalities of Balungao, Rosales, San Quintin and Umingan were annexed to Pangasinan. Nueva Ecija. S. Shifting political boundaries in fact necessitated transferring its provincial capital four times. Still, these changes proved ultimately beneficial to Nueva Ecija, as they resulted in a territory with rich land resources nourished by an excellent river system composed of the Rio Grande de Pampanga, Talavera and Penaranda rivers. This would help lay the foundation for Nueva Ecija's abundant agricultural economy starting with the American occupation in the early 20th century. Cry of Nueva Ecija The Cry of Nueva Ecija 
is the 1896 revolutionary battle led by General Mariano Yanera, manned and assisted by General Manuel Tinio and Pantaleon Valmonte of Gapan City, Nueva Ecija and Colonel Alipia Texan of Cabiao, Nueva Ecija who later on became Brigadier General. The battle was fought in Cabiao, Nueva Ecija. Alipia Texan would eventually become Governor Silo of Cabiao, Nueva Ecija. Tobacco Monopoly Maintaining the Philippines as a colony became a challenge for the Spanish Empire. Expenses incurred in running the colony were usually paid for by a yearly subsidy called Real Situado, sent from the Philippines' sister colony in Mexico. This financial support from the Spanish royal court was often insufficient, especially with expenditures in the Philippine colony growing each year. This prompted the royal fiscal assigned in Manila to devise a plan to allow the colony itself to raise revenues on its own and thus be able to supplement the Spanish subsidy. This royal fiscal was Francisco Leandro de Viana, who first proposed creating a tobacco monopoly. De Viana reasoned, tobacco was a product widely consumed throughout the islands, with a market of roughly 1 million. He projected earnings of as much as p. 400,000 from the venture. The first time the proposal was made, however, both King Carlos III of Spain and colonial officials didn't give the idea much importance. All that would change during the term of Governor General José Bosco y Vargas. Bosco had plans to develop and promote Philippine agriculture, and de Viana's proposal seemed attractive to him. After studying the proposal, Bosco sent his plan to establish a large-scale tobacco production in the colony under complete ownership and management by the colonial government of Spain. What probably perked up the ears of the Spanish king about Bosco plan to make the Philippine colony financially self-sufficient, thus removing a huge financial burden from the Spanish crown. The King of Spain issued a royal decree on February 9, 1780 setting in motion Bosco's plan. Almost two years to the date of that royal decree, Bosco ordered local officials and military commanders to prevent unnecessary losses of tobacco revenues. By March 2, 1782 tobacco production was established in Luzon, with La Union, Ilocos, Abra, Cagayan Valley and Nueva Ecija still part of Pampanga at the time, as the centers for planting, growing, harvesting and processing tobacco. This made a drastic and extreme change in the lives of all Novo Ecijanos. Where farmland used to bear rice, tobacco was now the only crop allowed to grow. These included the towns of Gapan, San Isidro, Jn, Cabiao, Cabanatuan, Talavera, Santer and Bongabon. Each farming family was given a quota of tobacco plant to grow. By 1850 the tobacco monopoly was producing immense financial gain for the colonial government. Some reports at the time pegged the earnings by as much as $500,000. One account in 1866 reported a much higher amount, as earnings rose to $38,418,939 that year. Novo Ecijanos suffered a lot from the system. Nueva Ecija was more often able to meet production quotas compared to the other districts. Despite this, tobacco policy imposed a lower price on tobacco from areas closer to Manila. That meant that first-class tobacco leaf grown and harvested from Nueva Ecija was priced lower by $1, compared to those from Ilocos, La Union and Cagayan Valley. The tobacco monopoly did not spur Novo Ecijanos to revolt, unlike the Ilocanos who staged an uprising over injustices in the system. Some tobacco growers in Nueva Ecija resorted to smuggling their own harvests in order to get some profit. But getting caught entailed harsher fines and penalties. Even sympathetic local officials had no choice but to enforce the unjust policies under pain of arrest and hard labor, once laxity on their part resulted in low production. The flourishing tobacco industry coupled with the rich agricultural lands in central and northeastern Nueva Ecija also attracted migrants from neighboring Pampanga, Pangasinan, Ilocos and Tagalog areas. This made Nueva Ecija a melting pot of cultures and influences, the results of which are still evident in present-day Novo Ecijano culture. As the tobacco monopoly fueled further unrest, Spain finally abolished the monopoly on December 3, 1882. It was only then that they could all once again grow rice for food. Freedom Fighters 
One distinct feature of the 1896 revolution against Spain in Nueva Ecija was that it was led by the elite, ruling class instead of the masses. Leaders of the revolt in Nueva Ecija were municipal officials and prominent citizens, who refused to collaborate with the Spanish authorities when armed struggle broke out. Despite being in the ruling class and enjoying positions in the colonial government, these prominent Novo Ecijanos proved their patriotism and love for fellow Filipinos. In fact, one of the founding members of the reform movement La Liga Filipina was lawyer and Novo Ecijano Mamerto Natividad. By the time the Katipunan, the revolutionary movement against Spain, was formed, Novo Ecijanos were actively yet secretly joining it. Even local officials in Nueva Ecija secretly allied with the ilustrados and farmers in forming the underground revolutionary society. Once the Spanish authorities learned of the Katipunan's existence, those perceived as sympathizers of the movement, and even those who were falsely accused of being members of it, were arrested. Mamerto Natividad was among those arrested for sedition, tortured and killed by Guardia Civil. He was one of the first Novo Ecijano martyrs for freedom. His death, however, would result in bigger problems for the Spanish authorities. Mamerto Natividad's two sons, Mamerto Jr. and Benito Natividad, later joined the Katipunan. The Spaniards burned their house and sugar mills in JN. Mamerto Jr. was later jailed for shooting a Spanish judge who had slapped his younger brother. As the revolution gained ground, Mamerto Jr. was released and he was able to join the revolutionary army of General Emilio Aguinaldo in Cavite. By August 30, 1896 a state of war was declared by the Spanish colonial government in several Luzon provinces including Nueva Ecija, Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac, Batangas, Laguna, Cavite and Manila. Novo Ecijanos immediately proved themselves worthy of the fight for freedom. On September 2, 1896, Novo Ecijanos led by Gen. Mariano Yanera, capital municipal of Cabiao and Gen. Pantaleon Valmonte, Capitan Municipal of Gapan attacked San Isidro, the provincial capital. Their 3,000-strong army attacked San Isidro in distinct Novo Ecijano fashion, accompanied by music played by the Banda de Cabiao or Cabiao Band. It seems that in love or war, music is integral to Novo Ecijanos. Novo Ecijanos like Yanera, Valmonte, Mamerto Natividad Jr. and Manuel Tinio conducted themselves heroically during the revolution. They were allied with Aguinaldo's Magdalo group. Aguinaldo was in fact so impressed, he appointed Natividad and Yanera to the two highest ranking posts in the revolutionary army. Natividad became General Mamerto Natividad, commanding general of the revolutionary army, while General Yanera was vice commander with the rank of lieutenant general. General Natividad proved himself worthy of the position by scoring victories against the Spanish in Tayag, Pangasinan and San Rafael, Bulacan. On November 11, 1897, Natividad's life would end after he was killed in action in Cabiao, Nueva Ecija. His death precipitated the Pact of Biak Nabato, a peace treaty that sought to end hostilities between Spanish authorities and the Filipino rebels. The treaty provided for a payment of P-800,000 to the rebels who would then be exiled to Hong Kong. Five Novo Ecijanos would accompany Aguinaldo's exile. They were General Mariano Yanera, Benito Natividad, General Manuel Tinio, and Joaquin Natividad. Later on, Novo Ecijanos would continue to participate in the drama of war, revolution and the fight for freedom. They would fight when the revolt against Spain continued after the peace treaty broke down and the United States, after declaring war on Spain, promised to help Filipinos fight for freedom. Then, Novo Ecijanos again joined General Emilio Aguinaldo in the Philippine-American War, after it became evident the United States wanted to make the Philippines their own colony, then when the Japanese tried to make the Philippines their own colony at the outbreak of the Second World War in the Pacific, Novo Ecijanos would also make history by participating in guerrilla activities. The exploits of the Novo Ecijano guerrillas have in fact been made into literature, through the World War II novel Ghost Soldiers by Hampton Sides and in Hollywood cinema, in the war film The Great Raid based on the book. 
begins the liberation of Nueva Ecija in 1945, combined military forces of all stronghold Filipino troops under the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary Units and the American troops under the United States Armed Forces liberated the province of Nueva Ecija and helped them from the Novo Ecijano and Hukbalahap resistance against the Japanese Imperial Forces and aftermath in World War II. American period History records how the Philippine-American War began after American troops killed a Filipino soldier who was crossing the San Juan Bridge on February 4, 1899. One could also say however that hostilities and mistrust really began as early as August 13 the previous year. On that day, the Spanish colonial government in Intramuros surrendered to American forces instead of the Filipino soldiers that surrounded the walled city. Thus began the United States' own effort to have her own colonies, with the Philippines served, as it were, on a silver platter by the dying Spanish Empire thanks to the Treaty of Paris. When the war between Filipinos and Americans finally began, the fate of the infant Republic of the Philippines again lay in the hands of General Aguinaldo and his most trusted men who included Novo Ecijanos like General Yanera and General Tinio. And, as guerrilla warfare became an effective tactic for the Filipinos, Novo Ecijanos were among the most feared guerrillas around. Both the Novo Ecijanos and Americans were willing to resort to brutal tactics, torture and even atrocious killings in the course of the war. Two Novo Ecijanos were deported and exiled in Guam for not taking allegiance to the American government, they were General Mariano Yanera and Col. Olipia Texan. By the time the war ended on April 1, 1901 with Aguinaldo's surrender to the Americans, Novo Ecijano guerrillas who had fought so fiercely and bravely against two sets of foreign invaders reluctantly gave up. Still that was not the end of the association between them and the Americans. The end of the Philippine-American War also signaled a new beginning for Nueva Ecija and its people. The Railway before the American occupation, Nueva Ecija was already a hub of trade and commerce. Since Nueva Ecija in the 19th century had neither excellent roads nor the ideal land transport system, trading activities were done mainly through the waterways. While we moderns consider rivers as obstacles that need to be crossed, people in the 19th century valued rivers not just as sources of food and water but as passages for trading barges and boats. Thus, Nueva Ecija's early trading settlements sprouted along riverbanks. Commercial, inter-provincial trade was carried out using the Rio Grande de Pampanga as main waterway, with trade outposts in San Isidro and Talipapa. Traders from Bulacan, Tondo and Manila regularly came to Nueva Ecija to carry back rice, pele, tobacco, sugar, corn and livestock. The Americans, however, wanted to shift from waterborne trade to a land-based trade system. Their idea for establishing this depended on something they were masters at building railways. The American colonial government thought a railway could help boost Nueva Ecija's economic growth, in the same way that the U.S. railway system helped unite and develop the economy of the North American continent. What made the railway project attractive was that it was less expensive than building roads. At first run by a private company, the U.S. colonial government took over the ownership and management of the railway system by 1917. The Americans were soon proven right, trade conducted through the railways boosted Nueva Ecija's income by 25% while transport costs went down by 25% to as much as 75%. With the train able to transport more goods and more people at a cheaper rate, the railway helped spark a rice boom in Gapan, San Isidro, Cabanatuan, Santa Rosa and Penaranda. Farmers could devote more land to growing rice and even secondary crops like onions and watermelons. More rice mills, farmers and farmer settlers came to Nueva Ecija. By 1936, there were 42 rice mills in Nueva Ecija, owned mostly by Chinese. The agriculture-based economic boom brought about by the train's huge load capacity and greater speed, compared to boats, encouraged waves of migrations to Nueva Ecija from places like Ilocos, Pampanga, Pangasinan, Tarlac and Bulacan. The railway brought other changes to Nueva Ecija. While trade was still being done by waterways, settlements by necessity had to be established close to the rivers, where people's basic necessities came from. 
When the trains became the main mode of transporting goods and people, and with the influx of migrants, it became not only possible but crucial to build more communities further inland. This meant roads and irrigation systems were needed. Roads and irrigation As communities expanded inward, first along the rivers and then along the railways, the need for roads and irrigation systems leading to communities in the plains became more urgent. These made it possible for the more remote towns, those farther away from both rivers and railroads, to grow crops and participate in trade, ending what was until then a very slow pace of economic development. By 1912 Governor Benito Natividad had appropriated funds to fast-track the building of roads and bridges linking these remote towns and municipalities to then-provincial capital Cabanatuan. The American government also constructed three major irrigation facilities, one, the Talavera Irrigation System in 1924, two, Penaranda River Irrigation System in 1930 and three, Pampanga River Irrigation System in 1939. By the time these irrigation systems went in full swing, combined with the railway system and the many rice mills, Nueva Ecija had been established as the rice granary of the Philippines. From 1930 to 1939, rice production in Nueva Ecija was averaging more than 9 million cabins of rice. Homesteading and U.S.-style tenancy Unlike the American pioneers of the Old West, Filipinos were not so willing to occupy remote, unsettled and undeveloped areas. So when the American colonial government introduced homesteading, there were few takers among Filipinos. Essentially, homesteading happens when someone lays claim on, harnesses the resources and develops a parcel of land, even if it's still wilderness and far from population centers, for economic use. Homesteading could be done through a legal process of acquiring a land title, or even without a title at all. In the latter case however, the lack of a title makes the informal homesteader vulnerable to any legal action attempting to take the land away from him. When the Philippine Bill of 1902 was passed by the U.S. Congress, the U.S. colonial government was formally established in the Philippine Islands. This meant the colonial government now had the authority to dispose of public lands on its own, without having to seek the approval of the President of the United States. Based on an earlier survey of public lands by the Philippine Commission, the new American colonial government offered public lands to settlers through homesteading, sale, purchase or lease, under the American regime. S. Homesteading system, an individual could get up to 16 hectares of land, while a corporation could get as much as 1,024 hectares. This did not result in a wide settlement of lands throughout the country, however. Nueva Ecija was one exception, as more settlers opted to homestead its lands. A 1928 statistical bulletin records nearly 70,000 hectares were given to more than 5,000 homestead applicants. Among the immigrant settlers of Nueva Ecija, the Ilocanos were mainly responsible for opening up through their homesteads the once sparsely populated, remote areas of the province. Much like the early American pioneers, the Ilocanos tamed the land and turned what was once hostile wilderness into habitable and productive land. However, the homesteading effort under the American regime resulted in a drop in tenancy in 1918, it ultimately failed in succeeding decades. This was due to two major factors. First, the new farmer settlers did not have enough capital to sustain farming costs. Without any financial assistance available from the government that granted them the land, farmer settlers accumulated huge debts at very high interest rates from usurious moneylenders. Most of these homesteaders were later forced to sell their land and become tenant farmers instead. Civil government in the American period The civil governments established in various provinces in the Philippines under the American occupation were supposed to teach Filipinos the basic principles of democracy, following U.S. military rule. In general, each provincial government presided over local governments in each town or municipality. In turn, each municipality would have a president, vice president and municipal councillors. These were elected by a select group of qualified electors for two-year terms. The Second Philippine Commission went to what was then Nueva's provincial capital, San Isidro, on June 8, 1901 to begin proceedings for establishing the local and provincial governments. 
16 out of Nueva Ecija. S19 towns were represented in the meeting. Elections of various representatives from the different towns were carried out successfully. However, there was still the thorny problem of deciding whether or not to move the provincial capital. The dilemma was caused by events related to the Philippine-American War. First, Nueva Ecija had been a hotbed of resistance against the American occupation, and was therefore in a state of siege. Four of its towns, Balungao, Rosales, San Quentin and Umingan, which were further away from the capital and already considered pacified by U.S. forces, had been annexed to the province of Pangasinan. The newly elected Nueva Ecija representatives were of the view that since a civil government under the Americans was already being established, it was time to return the four towns to Nueva Ecija. This would benefit the province as the four town were rich in natural resources. The fact that the towns were quite far from the capital, one of the representatives suggested, was no obstacle, the provincial capital could simply be moved to Cabanatuan. Other representatives objected to this proposal, pointing out that Cabanatuan had no infrastructures wherein to house the provincial government. The matter was not resolved until two years later, when the U.S. Governor General signed Act No. 1748, ordering the transfer of the capital to Cabanatuan by 1912. The civil provincial government of Nueva Ecija was formally established by the Taft Commission on June 11, 1901. The very first governor under this new system was Epifanio de los Santos. The main artery connecting most of Metro Manila has been named after Governor de los Santos, which is Epifanio de los Santos Avenue or simply, EDSA. Education during the American period It was the Americans who succeeded in making education widely available to Filipinos. While the Spanish government did, rather belatedly in their rule, in the middle of the 19th century, decide to establish public schools, it was the Americans who were able to improve it. A report of the United States Philippine Commission in 1900 showed, only 10 out of 23 municipalities in Nueva Ecija had a public school established during the Spanish times and according to the Philippine Commission figures by 1902, 37 public primary schools were established, and 63 Novo Ecijano teachers supported by 16 American Thomasites. Part of the larger group of some 500 pioneer American teachers who arrived aboard the USAT Thomas in September 1901, to help establish an American public school system in the Philippines. The Education Act No. 74 approved by the Philippine Commission in 1901 proved to be the catalyst that made Novo Ecijanos rally behind the local and American teachers to make sure as many children as possible benefited from the public school system. People contributed in the form of cash, construction materials or labor, and even vacant lots for the building of schools. Community support for the building of schools was such that by 1906, there were already 99 schools in Nueva Ecija. The Novo Ecijano's high regard for the value of an education is a trait that persists until today. The public school system was still hampered by a lot of problems, however. Relying only on local support, Nueva Ecija and other places in the Philippines as well could simply not meet the increasing needs of a growing number of schools, teachers and students. Given the high premium placed by Novo Ecijanos on education, a legislator from Nueva Ecija took the crucial step to compel the American colonial government to allot funding for public education via a legislative act. Assemblyman Isauro Gabaldon of Nueva Ecija filed an education bill before the 1907 Philippine Assembly, which would later be approved and known as the Gabaldon Education Act. The bill required government to earmark P1 million for public schools throughout the Philippine Islands. Nueva Ecija benefited tremendously from the new education law. By 1908 Nueva Ecija had 144 primary schools, 11 non-sectarian private schools, 18 sectarian private schools, 9 intermediate schools, 1 vocational school and 1 agricultural school, the Central Luzon Agricultural School, which is currently now operating as Central Luzon State University. World War II during World War II the Imperial Japanese Army entered the province and Nueva Ecija was taken in 1942. 
On March 29, 1942, under the leadership of Luis Tarek the Hukbalahap Hukbo ng Bayan Laban Sa Hapon People's Army against the Japanese was organized in Sitio Bawit, Barrio San Julian in the town of Cabiao. It was perceived to be the military arm of the Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas Communist Party of the Philippines, that brought about the beginning of the early organized resistance of the Filipino people. During World War II under the Japanese occupation, the Philippine Commonwealth Army has the re-establishment of the military general headquarters, military bases and camps here in the province of Nueva Ecija on January 3, 1942 to June 30, 1946 before the engagements of the anti-Japanese Imperial Military operations in central Luzon include Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, Tarlac, Zambales, Bulacan and northern Tayabas now. Aurora from 1942 to 1945 and aided the local recognized guerrillas and the Hukbalahap communist guerrillas against the Japanese imperial forces since the Japanese counter-insurgencies 1942 to 1944 and the Allied Liberation 1944-1945 in January to August 1945 combined American and Filipino soldiers liberated Nueva Ecija with the recognized guerrillas continuing to harass the Japanese at every opportunity. When Filipino soldiers of the 2nd, 22nd, 23rd, 25th and 26th Infantry Division of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and the 2nd Constabulary Regiment of the Philippine Constabulary was re-invading launches to entering liberated the province of Nueva Ecija and helping recognized guerrilla resistance fighter units, the Hukbalahap communist guerrillas and the American troops against the Japanese imperial forces during the invasion of Nueva Ecija. On January 30, 1945 American Army Rangers, Alamo Scouts and Filipino guerrillas conducted a raid to liberate Allied civilians and prisoners of war in Cabanatuan. This was successful with over 516 rescued. By January 31, 1945, the liberated civilians and POWs reached Talavera. The rescue is commemorated in Talavera. Contemporary era after the war, much rebuilding was made at the urban areas of the province, specifically Cabanatuan and Gapan. This became the focus of the administrations of Quezon, Roxas, Quirino, Magsaysay, Garcia, and Macapagal. The city of Palayan was formally established by law and became the new capital of the province. Much of the rebuilding and establishment of economic centers in the province spiraled down due to the declaration of martial law by Marcos, which was toppled by the EDSA People Power Revolution, where the namesake came from a Novo Asijano. Repairing the economy was continued by the Aquino and Ramos governments. The Estrada government led to a decline in agriculture in the province. The Arroyo and Aquino governments swayed the losses and regained vitality in the province. The Duterte government accession made wary ups and downs in the provincial economy. Politics The governor of Nueva Ecija is the highest ranking official in the province, after the president of the Philippines. The province is divided into four congressional districts, which consists of 27 municipalities and five cities, namely, Cabanatuan, San Jose, Palayan, Gapan and Science City of Muñoz. The provincial capital is Palayan City. Each district has a specialization, where District 1 is known for its organic agriculture, District 2 is known for its highlands and protected forests, District 3 is known for its urban and economic settings, and District 4 is known for its diverse cultural celebrations. Each district is under a congressperson, whom represents the district at the House of Representatives in Congress. Political alliances in the province is extremely strong, with the ruling party, the Liberal Party of the Philippines, staying in power since the post-martial law era. Being an agricultural province, the main political agenda for the province is agricultural and aquacultural advancements, along with high-level education, health, and job and business generation. The current governor of the province is Zarina Umali, wife of the former governor. Serving as vice-governor is Jose Gay G. Padernos. Literature The finest Tagalog novelist of the province is Francisco Lazaro. His novels depicted life in an agrarian society that gave rise to the social unrest of his period, 1950s and 1960s. One of his novels was serialized by Laweiwei magazine, the most popular Tagalog magazine at that time until the 70s. 
But unlike the Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas, Lazaro advocated for the peaceful resolution of the agrarian problem, relying on the benevolence of the government and the landlords. Francisco Lazaro was from Tarlac. As a child, her parents immigrated to Nueva Ecija. He practically grew up and studied in Cabanatuan. One of the elementary schools in Cabanatuan has been named after him. Francisco Lazaro is also a Freemason, and one of the distinguished master of Masonic Lodge 53 in Cabanatuan City. He was named a national artist in 2012. Geography the province is the largest in central Luzon, covering a total area of 5,751.33 square kilometers, 2,220.60 square miles. Its terrain begins with the southwestern marshes near the Pampanga border. It levels off and then gradually increases in elevation to rolling hills as it approaches the mountains of Sierra Madre in the east, and the Carabao and Cordillera Central Ranges in the north. Nueva Ecija is bordered on the northeast by Nueva Vizcaya, east by Aurora, south by Bulacan, southwest by Pampanga, west by Tarlac, and northwest by Pangasinan. The province has four distinct districts. The first district, northwest, has a mixture of Ilocano, Pangasinense, and Tagalog cultures. The second district, northeast, is the most complex as it has at least ten different ethnic groups. The third district, Central, has a metropolitan culture, coming from a majority of Tagalog culture, as Cabanatuan City is within it. And the fourth district, Southwest, has a mixture of Kapampangan and Tagalog cultures. Flora and fauna The species of flora and fauna in the province is diverse on its north and east borders, which exhibit a shared ecosystem with the Carabao Mountains in the north and the Sierra Madre Mountains in the east. The southeast areas are also known for its diverse fauna and flora due to the presence of the Minilungao National Park. The Ceratocentron fessili orchid, which can only be found in the Pantabangan Karinglan Watershed Forest Reserve in Karinglan, is considered as one of the most critically endangered orchid species in the entire Southeast Asian region. It is endangered due to illegal gathering from the wild and due to the illegal black market trade. The forest reserve is also home to the endemic Rafflesia consueloi, which is the smallest Rafflesia in the world and is found nowhere else. Philippine deer, Philippine warty pig, cloud rats, and other indigenous mouse species are also present in the province. In a recent activity, the presence of a Philippine eagle couple was discovered in the Sierra Madre side of Nueva Ecija. The couple are now protected by the local government units in that area. Snakes, lizards, and various amphibian species are also present, especially in wetter months. Administrative divisions The province is divided into four congressional districts comprising 27 municipalities and five cities. The province has the most number of cities in the central Luzon region. Climate Economy Nueva Ecija is considered the main rice-growing province of the Philippines and the leading producer of onions in the municipality of Bongabon in Southeast Asia. It is currently the ninth richest province in the country. Major industries Nueva Ecija is one of the top producers of agricultural products in the country. Its principal crops is mainly rice but corn and onion are produced in quantity. The province is often referred to as the rice granary of the Philippines. Other major crops are mango, calamansi, calamandan orange, banana, garlic, and vegetables. The municipality of Bongabon at the eastern part of the province at the foot of the Sierra Madre Mountains and its neighboring Lor and Rizal are the major producers of onion and garlic. Bongabon is called the onion capital of the country. A sunflower farm is housed inside the Central Luzon State University campus in Science City of Munoz. Education is very well established as a major industry in the province. The leading educational institutions are the Central Luzon State University in Science City of Munoz and Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, Wesleyan University Philippines, the only internationally accredited school in Central Luzon, College of the Immaculate Conception, La Fortuna College and Arulo University in Cabanatuan City. 
There are 18 tertiary level institutions in Cabanatuan City alone. Health services is a notable industry. Hospitals cater to patients from Nueva Ecija and some from neighboring provinces. There are schools of nursing and midwifery, mostly in Cabanatuan City. There are poultry farms in a number of towns, most notably, the Lorenzo Poultry Farms in San Isidro which is one of the largest in the country. Duck raising and egg production is an important livelihood. Fish ponds are unevenly distributed throughout the province but the largest concentrations are in San Antonio, Santa Rosa, and Cayapo. Fabrication of tricycle. Sidecars is widespread in the province, notably in Santa Rosa, where prices are as low as PHP 7000 which is practically the cheapest in the country. Several areas have mineral deposits. Copper and manganese have been found in General Tinio, Caringlan, and Pantabangan. The upper reaches of Caringlan and Palayan City are said to contain gold. In June 2008, it received the title, Milk Capital of the Philippines. Because Nueva Ecija gathers more milk from cows and carabaos water buffaloes, than any other place in the Philippines. The Philippine Carabao Center is in the CLSU compound in Science City of Munoz. Tourism Tourism in Nueva Ecija is focused on gatherings in churches, parks, and festivals. Some of these heritage areas are the Gapan Church, a Byzantine architecture church built from 1856 to 1872 which has been declared as a national cultural treasure, the first in the entire province, the Quezon family rest house in Bongabon which was also the place of death of former First Lady Aurora Quezon, centuries-old brick walls of the Tabacalera in San Isidro remain as witness to the Novo Ecijano's 100-year oppression, from 1782 to 1882, when the province became the center of the tobacco monopoly in central Luzon and was thus restricted from raising other crops. The statue of Philippine hero General Antonio Luna astride a horse stands at the Cabanatuan Plaza in front of the cathedral on the exact spot where the brave general was assassinated in 1899 in the city that adopted him subsequently, site of the arrest of Philippine hero Apolinario Mabina, known as the Sublime Paralytic. By the Americans on December 10, 1899 in Cayapo, the Triala House of General Manuel Tinio, built during the early Commonwealth period, it features ornately designed turn-of-the-century furniture and a life-size figure of esteemed Nova Sihano Don Capitan Barong in stained glass, the Gran Sedeco House in San Isidro, which General Emilio Aguinaldo frequented, marks this gallant town that has proven time and again to be cradle of Filipino heroes. It was here that General Frederick Funston planned the capture of Aguinaldo, First President of the Philippine Republic, during the Philippine-American War, Wright Institute of San Isidro, of the first high schools established outside Metro Manila during the American period, the Dalton Pass located in Capintalan, Caringlan, the five-hectare area blessed with a cool climate houses the Monument of General Dalton and a tower that borders the provinces of Nueva Ecija and Nueva Vizcaya, uphill is a World War II memorial in black marble where a historical account of the war had been etched in English and Japanese, the World War II concentration camp in Cabanatuan City, Nampaquan Church, Caringlan Church, Pantabangan Church, the Grand Minilungao National Park, known for its high limestone formations sculpted by the Penaranda River, General Luna Fall in Rizal, Mount Olivet in Bongabon, which is frequented by pilgrims due to its holy spring, the Capintalan, which is a reserve known for its World War II tunnels, forests, rivers, and artifacts and has been maintained by the only Afugao community in Nueva Ecija, located in Caringlan, Palaspas Falls in San Jose City, Gabaldon Falls in Gabaldon which is within the Sabani Estate Agricultural College, Peñaranda Church, which is one of the oldest in the province, built initially in 1887, Diamond Park in San Jose City, Pantabangan Dam, built in 1947, is the first and only rubber dam in Asia, the campus of the Philippine Rice Research Institute in Munoz which is the main research and experimentation arm of the government for rice and other crops, Central Luzon State University, which is the most academically excellent in the province and the only Novo Ecijano University to be declared a cultural property of the nation, CLSU Agricultural Museum, Living Fish Museum in Munoz, the Philippine Carabao Center in Munoz, which is the main arm of the national government on Carabao research and development, Mount Mape in Palayan City, and the Philippine Eagle exclusive area in the Nueva Ecija Sierra Madres. Demographics 
The population of Nueva Ecija in the 2015 census was 2,151,461 people, with a density of 370 inhabitants per square kilometer or 960 inhabitants per square mile. Ethnicity According to the Atlas Filipinas published by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts of the Philippines, 11 local ethnic languages with living ethnic speakers are present in Nueva Ecija, namely, Tagalog in the entire province, Avalon in a small part in the center, Kapampangan in the southwestmost section, Kankanayi in the east-central, Ilocano northern areas and a small section in the center, Alta in the east-central, Ada Mag Ansi in the center and the north-central, Bugcalat in Karanglan, Ibaloy in Karanglan, Kalanguya in Karanglan, and Isanay in Karanglan. Religion The province is predominantly Roman Catholic about 80%, while Aglipayan is a significant minority. Other Christian groups are represented by born-again Christians, Iglesia ni Cristo, Methodists, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventist. Muslims, Anatists, and Animists are also represented in the province. Atheism is also present in the province. Health The health issues facing the province are minimal because of the health establishments dotting all over the province. National health issues such as dengue, and malaria are on rise during rainy seasons, while HIV, AIDS is still low, but 2015 annual growth rate is unarguably high. Education The level of literacy in the province is very high. The top four universities in the province, collectively known as the Four Knowledge Eagle Universities of Nueva Ecija, or 4KEUN, are Central Luzon State University at Science City of Muñoz, Wesleyan University Philippines at Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology main campus located at Sumac of Cabanatuan City, and Finma Ariulo University at Cabanatuan City. The universities offer a diverse range of specializations. Every municipality also has local colleges. Central Luzon State University, a national cultural property, has also been accredited as being the 21st to the 6th most academically excellent in the entire country. The university has also been cited as one of the 100 most significant educational institutions in Asia, overwhelming most schools in Metro Manila and other metropolitan areas in the country. Tourist attractions Minalungao Park Pantabangan Lake Lupao Pinsel Falls Nabao Lake Culture Neoishijano culture is a mixture of Tagalog, Kapampangan, Pangasinense, Ilocano, and other indigenous cultures within the province. A melting pot of culture, the province has a varied of festivals, traditions, and beliefs that constitute Novo Ecijano heritage, along with tangible heritage structures, scenes, and objects. Cosmopolitanism Novo Ecijano architecture is based on indigenous Filipino types, Spanish colonial types, American colonial types, and modernist types. In rural areas, the Baha'i Cubo is still present, but has decreased significantly. Spanish and American colonial architecture, like those in the national capital region, have slowly been demolished one after the other, signaling a destruction of colonial heritage. Despite this, there are still colonial structures preserved and conserved such as town churches and some houses surrounding them. The current architectural trend in the province is modernist architecture, signaling an end to colonial architecture in the province. Music The music of the Neocajano is more concentrated on the Tagalog traditional and international music. The province shares the music heritage of other Tagalog provinces such as Rizal, Batangas, Bataan, Bulacan, Quezon, and Laguna. Visual Arts Many Novo Asijanos have been internationally known for their visual arts. 
The mediums are diverse, from garlic oil, blood, hair, threads, clays, pastels, leaves, mud, bronze, marble, cotton, piña, and paints which introduced as indigenous materials or indigenuism movements started by internationally known hair and blood painter of the Philippines. Values as a general description, the distinct value system of Filipinos is rooted primarily in personal alliance systems, especially those based in kinship, obligation, friendship, religion, and commercial relationships. Filipino values are, for the most part, centered around maintaining social harmony, motivated primarily by the desire to be accepted within a group. 496. The main sanction against diverging from these values are the concepts of Haya roughly translated as a sense of shame and amor propio or self-esteem 496 social approval acceptance by a group and belonging to a group are major concerns caring about what others will think say or do are strong influences on social behavior among filipinos other elements of the Filipino value system are optimism about the future, pessimism about present situations and events, concern and care for other people, the existence of friendship and friendliness, the habit of being hospitable, religious nature, respectfulness to self and others, respect for the female members of society, the fear of God, and abhorrence of acts of cheating and thievery. Dance a very Tagalog hotpot of culture, the Novoishijano dance scheme is ruled by the Carinosa, Tinikling, and other Tagalog traditional dances. Cuisine Neoishijano cuisine is varied. In its northwest, seafood and vegetable dishes with a lot of salt is prevalent due to its proximity with Pangasinan. In its northwest, highland crops are much prized. In its central and southern areas, food is very diverse due to its proximity with numerous sources of ingredients. Literature Neoishijano literature is defined by a strong nationalistic approach and a strong ethnically grounded scheme. The literature of the province is honed by the two literature departments of the Central Luzon State University, among others. The finest Tagalog novelist of the province is Francisco Lazaro. His novels depicted life in an agrarian society that gave rise to the social unrest of his period, 1950s and 1960s. One of his novels was serialized by Laweiwei Magazine, the most popular Tagalog magazine at that time until the 70s. But unlike the Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas, Lazaro advocated for the peaceful resolution of the agrarian problem, relying on the benevolence of the government and the landlords. Francisco Lazaro was from Tarlac. As a child, her parents immigrated to Nueva Ecija. He practically grew up and studied in Cabanatuan. One of the elementary schools in Cabanatuan has been named after him. Francisco Lazaro is also a Freemason, and one of the distinguished master of Masonic Lodge 53 in Cabanatuan City. He was named a national artist in 2012. Media Nueva Ecija has many of its own television channels and radio stations. Almost all towns have their own radio stations. Sports The most prevalent sport in the province, like in off provinces in the country, is basketball. Volleyball, badminton, cockfighting, and sepik to craw are the other big sports in the province. Games Traditional Novo Ecijano games are mainly Tagalog in nature. These games include Luxong Baca, Patintero, Pico, and Tumbang Prezo. The Novo Ecijano art group, Makasaning, is also a main author of Laro ng Lahi, or Philippine Indigenous Games Preservation Advocacy. Festivals Banatu Festival, Cabanatuan City Banatu Festival aims to showcase the history, culture, talent, beauty and craftsmanship of Cabanatuenos. Celebrates every January 29 to February 4, a lot of activities are usually lined up. The Banatu Festival, takes its name from Banatu, which means vine. Vergara said the word binds Cabanatuenos like a sturdy vine in their pursuit to progress and prosperity. 
Tayong Kutik Festival, Aliagat the crack of dawn, scores of mud-covered, barely-dressed devotees make their appearance, asking for alms and candles form the wide-awake town folks. This practice mimics a biblical myth about St. John the Baptist, who was said to have done the same thing in his lifetime. A special mass culminates the occasion, reinforcing its spiritual nature to the people of Aliaga. Ragragzik T. Gimba, Gimba, Nueva Asihagwimba's official festival which begins at February and ends at March. Preparations for the festival normally starts at January. The two-month-long festival commemorates the farming intangible traditions of the town along with its official naming as the mushroom capital of Nueva Ecija and as the organic capital of Nueva Ecija. Holy Week Rituals of Punkin, Caringland Unique Holy Week Rites of Punkin Caringlan One of the oldest towns in Nueva Ecija, are woven in folklore. Aside from the differing dialect, Pangasinense, widely used in Punkin, its distinct Lenten rituals include a hide-and-seek routine between the flagellante and hudio, a children's parade, and a choreographed version of Christian penitential rites in which participants with charcoal-smeared faces beat bamboos. Keratin Festival, Lick of Keratin, which means rig cart drawn by Carabao, is celebrated during the annual celebration of the founding anniversary of Likab Town on March 28. Keratin plays a significant part in the history of Likab. Don Dalmacio Isguera, the town's founding father, used keratin when he left San Nicolas, a locos norte until he finally settled and found this town in Likab. In fitting recognition of the significance of this very important farm equipment, the LGU of Lecab adopted Keratin Festival as the town's official festival. The event features a parade of colorfully dressed keratin floats, search of outstanding licabanos, agri aqua trade fair, and beauty pageant. Bebeanting Festival, Lupau Bebeanting is a one of a kind cultural tradition of Lupau, Nueva Ecija. It is a unique cultural presentation of the people of Lupau every 25 July to honor their patron, Señor Santiago, or St. James. It's a cultural presentation that features the war between Muslims and Christians. This peculiar cultural tradition is presented every year by selected and well-trained members of Iglesia Filipina Independiente, a Christian sect founded by a Filipino priest. Bebeanting is a choreographed fighting which is usually performed by nine pairs of fighting Filipino warriors and Spanish conquistadores. Performers use real bladed weapons unlike the zarzuelas that uses wooden swords. Araquio Festival, Penarondaraquio Festival is a unique festivity in form and artistry. This festival is Nueva Ecija's very own theatrical cum religious presentation similar to zarzuelas. During the Spanish regime in the country, the Araquio Festival is traditionally held in the month of May in the town of Peñaranda. The festival dramatized the spread of Christianity in the country and the war between Christians and Muslims. Festival performers, 16 performers in each Araquio group, sing, act and dance while a brass band plays. The choice of songs and choreography varies, but the script has remained the same since the tradition started. This festival is listed as a Philippine Intangible Cultural Heritage by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts Philippines, the only national intangible property that is solely from Nueva Ecija. Tanduyong Festival, San Jose City prides itself as the onion capital of the Philippines and is a leading producer of onion, garlic, rice and vegetables. Every year, on the fourth Sunday of April, the people of San Jose dance through the main street in a colorful, enchanting celebration of the blessing of the harvest. On festival day, the streets are filled with contingents of dancers outfitted in striking, multi-hued native costumes. Exotic rhythms of improvised musical instruments fill the air as the dancers gyrate and sway to the beat of life. Special activities included art beauty contest, tourism and trade fair, awarding ceremony and cultural shows. Pajabong de Mara, San Jose City Fiestas are time to celebrate. A time to take a break. It is a time to give thanks for bounties received for the whole year. A time to get together. A time to play and re-energized. They offer a respite for people who work the entire year. And restore inspiration for another year ahead. Hundreds of years ago, here in central Luzon, landlords in the haciendas made the farmers build the Damara 
just before planting time of Pele. A. Damara is a makeshift shelter made from kawayan, bamboo, and nipa, built at the center of rice fields as a protection from the sun's heat or from rain. Over the years, it has been tradition that after all the harvests were safely brought home, the damaras are demolished. Jinijiba. People then start celebrating together for the bountiful harvest. In 2008, with rice as its primary produce, San Jose City conducted its first rice festival, adopting the centuries-old festive tradition. However, unlike in older days, wherein people celebrate separately in their barangays, San Jose City now celebrates as one big family. The after-harvest celebration has become a multi-sectoral effort, collectively prepared, funded out of contributions, from the public and private sector, and participated in by all sections of the city. Pantawan Festival, Pantabangan This festival is held every last week of April in Pantabangan, Nueva Ecija. Pantabangan boasts of one of the biggest fish-producing towns in Asia. The word panda means assurance of an abundant fresh water catch each time the festival is celebrated. Festival features street dancing, trade fair and local art and craft competition. The Pandawan Festival made its debut in April 2008, showcasing many local talents as well as other entertainments including indigenuism art activities like art workshop and rural development through art awareness programs. Tourists like to visit especially the water sport enthusiasts for jet skiing, boat riding and even bass fishing. Sabuya's Festival, Bongabansabaya's Festival is celebrated as a form of thanksgiving and a way to show that Bongabon is one of the largest producers of onion in Asia. Celebrate on April. Patron Sta. Catalina. Thousands of pilgrims visit the shrine, image every year because it is believed to be miraculous. Sinilas Festival, Gapan slippers or Sinilas made in the city of Gapan, Nueva Ecija find their way all over the country, lending credence to the city's claim to be the Sinilas capital of the Philippines. Gapan commemorates their major industry with the Sinilas Festival on the anniversary of their cityhood. Beautifully crafted slippers await festival's goers in a slippers bazaar along the highway. The major attraction of this festival, however, are the pairs of gigantic slippers displayed in a parade of floats. Paistima Festival, Cavio Paistima Festival celebrates annually start in February 5-11 to commemorate the founding anniversary of the town. The first day of celebration begins in parade of delegates and local government officials. The other day Cabiaueños competition in some talents like cooking, dancing, new product endorsing and many more. Also the representative of their barangay is competing in street dancing and mass demonstration particularly every school. The top and high score of their performance shall win and claim the prices. The other day presents the highlights of the festival Binabining Cabiao, every Brigi, have there represents their beauty in this prestigious events. The rank of Hias ng Cabiao, Mutya ng Cabiao, and finally the Binabining Cabiao will crown in the last. Kayawan Festival, Kabiawa Thanksgiving to the Feast of Patron's Town Proper St. John Nepomucene every 8 to 16 of May. Highlights of the festival are May Flower Parade of Beauty, Dart Competition, Bike Athon, Fun Run, Street Dancing with Grand Parade, Mutya ng Kabiao, and Gabi ng Parangal sa Natatanjing Anak ng Kabiao. Calame Festival, San Leonardo every year, they celebrate with white sticky rice mix, clear sweetened sauce and brown toppings. Papaya Festival General Tinia Holy Mass and religious activities are celebrated to honor the town's patron saint, San Isidro de Labrador. It is highlighted by parades of numerous brass bands around the town. Notable people See also List of radio stations in Nueva Ecija Super regions of the Philippines Intangible cultural heritage of the Philippines References External links Media related to Nueva Ecija at Wikimedia Commons Geographic data related to Nueva Ecija at OpenStreetMap Philippine Standard Geographic Code 
Local Governance Performance Management System Nueva Ecija Now and Beyond